water, earth, fire, air. Long ago, the four nations lived together in harmony. Then everything changed when M. Night Shyamalan attacked. My name is Tim, and here today on Channel Frederator, we're going to forget that the live-action movie ever happened, and instead, count down 107 facts about the cartoon Avatar The Last Airbender. Let's get started. Number 1. Co-creator Michael DiMartino left Family Guy to work on Avatar The Last Airbender. If you ask me, he traded up. Who the hell cares? Number 2. The four Chinese characters shown on the title screen translate to the divine medium who had descended upon the mortal world. In other words, it's a rough translation of what an avatar is. Number three, Zutara shippers may want to check out American Dragon Jake Long. Katara's voice actress Mae Whitman played Rose, the love interest of the titular character Jake, played by none other than Zuko's voice actor Dante Bosco. Even in that show, the two are on opposing sides. Number four, in some Avatar The Last Airbender comics, Katara's name is misspelled as Takara. Whoops. Although, to be fair, it's not as egregious as M. Night Shyamalan's pronouncing of Ang in the movie The Last Airbender. Number 5. The episode The Southern Air Temple was originally going to be titled Ang Goes Home. Number 6. The Southern Air Temple is the only episode without a white background for its title screen. Instead, it has a sunrise. Number 7. Sokka's name comes from the Japanese phrase Soka, which means something along the lines of I see or is that so? It ties to Sokka's intellectual capabilities and his use of logic and understanding. Which is odd, because I've always felt like he has a limited use of logic and understanding. He's creative, though. That's the whole point of the Swordmaster episode. Number 8. Sokka is seen using both of his hands to write, attack, and draw, even switching them mid-activity at times. Number 9. There were no plans for the Cabbage Man to be a recurring character, but the writers found him to be hilarious, and he was a hit with the fans, so it became a running gag. The Cabbage Man eventually went on to found Cabbage Corp, which may or may not have been responsible for the Cabbage Patch, doll fat of the 1980s. <laughs> Number 10. It's hard to imagine Team Avatar without Zuko, but it was a real possibility. Our favorite firebender was one of the last characters to be added to the show. The Fire Lord himself was going to be the focal antagonist, but writers soon realized that they couldn't do much with him from his throne, so they added Zuko. Not to be confused with Danny Zuko. Although he would make a good villain as well. <laughs> Maybe there's two of us, right? Number 11. A melody plays during the opening shot of each episode when the episode's number and title are displayed. This tune is unique for each episode and is usually pulled from something significant to the episode. In The Painted Lady, a portion of The Painted Lady's theme is played. In The Firebending Masters, a slower version of the Sun Warriors chant is being played. And for the first and final episodes of the series, versions of the Avatar theme are played. Number 12. Airbending is based on the Chinese martial art Ba Gao Zhang. Number 13. Waterbending is based on the Chinese martial art Tai Chi. Number 14. Earthbending is based on the Hungar style of Kung Fu. Number 15. Firebending is based on the Northern Shaolin Kung Fu. Number 16. Though Earthbending is based on Hungar, Toph, who is taught by badger moles, has her own style based on the Southern Praying Mantis style of Kung Fu. This is appropriate because Toph often looks like she'd be willing to bite your head off. Also, why do badger moles know Praying Mantis Kung Fu? Number 17. Iroh isn't just Zuko's uncle, he's also his mentor. Well, he wasn't always going to be both. Originally, Iroh was just going to be Zuko's firebending mentor. Number 18. In the early stages of development, the show was going to take place thousands of years in the future. Number 19. Almost all of the show's animals are hybrid creatures. Appa the flying bison is half bison, half manatee. Momo the winged lemur is half bat, half lemur. I wonder if there's any, like, really delicious commos, like half pig and half beef. Number 20. Mako, Uncle Iroh's original voice actor, sadly passed away before completing his recordings for the last seven episodes of Season 2. Staff had to rush and recast the part, which temporarily halted production of Season 3. Number 21. For the first half of Season 3, Iroh only made two appearances, both silent. Greg Baldwin, Mako's understudy and longtime student, took over the role from there. Number 22. In the show's opening, five silhouetted figures demonstrate bending. The waterbender is Master Paku, the earthbender is Sud, the Firebender is Azula, and the Avatar is Roku. The Airbender is the only one of the five who never corresponded with a character appearing in the series or in supplementary materials. 
Number 23, Aang's good friend Bumi, the Earth King's name, is most fitting. In Malay, Indonesian, as well as several Indian languages, Bumi means Earth. Number 24, in the show's unaired pilot, Katara's name was Kia. This was changed before the series start when Nickelodeon's legal department discovered that there was an existing video game character named Kia. The name Kana was then considered, but later became the name of Katara and Sokka's grandmother. Kia became the name of Katara and Sokka's mother. The legal departments are really cautious. I mean, what, if one person has a name you can't use it? Tim is useless forever because it is my name. Number 25, Admiral Zhao was inspired by William Tavington, a character from the 2000 film The Patriot. Number 26, the show's casting director, Marianne Dacey, was asked to find Find someone similar to Tavington and managed to get Jason Isaacs, the actor who portrayed him. Number 27, each episode from the start of the script writing to being ready to air took around nine months. In other words, a human child could be conceived and born in the time it takes to make an episode. Number 28, Darth Vader may be Luke's father, but Luke is Zuko's. Fire Lord Ozai is played by Mark Hamill, best known for his roles as Star Wars' Luke Skywalker and Batman's Joker. And Fire Lord Ozai bends lightning, so in the end, Luke did get his dark side lightning powers. Number 29, only five characters in the series have had their exact ages revealed. Aang is 112, but really just 12 if you subtract his ice block years. Zuko and Yue are both 16, Toph is 12, and Tom Tom is 2. For those of you who forgot, Tom Tom is Mai's younger brother. Number 30, it's mentioned that Mai is 15 years older than her sibling, so if we do the math, she's 17. Number 31, the calligraphy on the top and bottom of the map shown during Avatar's intro sequence form a rhyming couplet in Chinese. Translated, it means powers are divided into four, the world is guided by one. Number 32, depending on how you pronounce it, Yue's name can be the Chinese word for moon. Number 33, Suki's name also means moon, but in Japanese, sounds like Sokka's got a thing for girls who are out of this world. Uh, number 34, Aang, Katara, and Sokka appear in every episode of the show except for Zuko alone. Which makes sense because Zuko can't be alone if the whole gang is there. Zuko just needs a me day. Treat yourself. Number 35, Momo comes in second for most appearances at 56 episodes, then Appa with 54, Zuko with 48, Iroh with 39, and Toph with 36. Number 36, a traditional firebending duel is called an Agni Kai. Agni is a Sanskrit word for fire, as well as the name of a Hindu fire deity. Kai translates from Japanese to meeting or together. Number 37, we all know that Toph is a standout gal, but did you notice that she and her family are the only characters with last names? Presumably you only give your best characters last names. Number 38, okay, okay, okay. So there are two other last names that appear in the series, but they don't really count because they're fake. When they snuck into the Fire Nation, Saki used the last name Fire, and Aang used Pippin Paddle Opsicopsilus. You'd think that he'd pick something easier to remember or pronounce, because that word is hard to pronounce. Let's take a break from those facts so I can tell you about a giveaway we have coming up. Be sure to download the Channel Frederator app, now on iOS and Android, to be entered into our first giveaway. The giveaway runs until October 3rd, so don't wait. We'll be giving away this Appa plush, and we'll be revealing more items in the coming weeks. In the app, we'll be showing exclusive content that won't be on YouTube, and we'll be releasing episodes of your favorite shows early. Click here to learn more about it. And now back to the facts. <laughs> Number 39, remember the Dai Li from Ba Sing Se? In Chinese, Dai Li means to act on behalf of someone in a responsible position or to act as an agent or proxy. Number 40, Lake Laogai is the headquarters of the Dai Li. In Chinese, Laogai is short for Laodong Gai Zhao, which means reform through labor. It references Chinese political prison camps, which were frequently used in the 1960s to incarcerate counter-revolutionaries and other political criminals, where prisoners were forced to take part in labor and are often brainwashed. Number 41, Toph Bei Fong was originally going to be a male. Number 42, it was confirmed by creators Brian Konietzko and Michael DiMartino that Sood's design was a prototype for Toph. Number 43, the show used the same music for its credits throughout all its episodes except for one, the series finale, Sozin Comet Part 4, Avatar Aang, used a more heroic tune. Number 44, the word avatar is derived from a Sanskrit word that literally means those who descend. Number 45, Zuko's great-grandfather on his mother's side is Avatar Roku, who via reincarnation is Aang. By the transitive property, does that make Aang Zuko's great-grandfather? 
Number 46, Earthbenders learn from Badger Moles, Airbenders learn from Sky Bison, Firebenders learn from Dragons, and Waterbenders learn from the Moon? One of these things is not like the other. Although if you want to expand it out to the Legend of Korra, perhaps they all learned it from Turtles, because that's what Avatar 1 did. Number 47, the calligraphy on the four corners of the Avatar world's map each represent one of the nations. Each corner's box has a circle with two characters. The one on the left is just the element of that particular nation, but combined with the character on the right, they take on new meanings. Water becomes virtue, earth becomes strong, fire becomes fierce, and air becomes peaceful. Also, earth, wind, and fire come together to form one of the best bands of the 20th century. Number 48. There has been a great deal of debate on whether or not Avatar The Last Airbender is an anime. Many fans in the United States say that because it doesn't originate in Japan, it can't be anime. On the other hand, many fans in Japan say that whether or not something is an anime is based in style, not nationality. What do you guys think? Be sure to leave a flame war below in the comments. Number 49. Despite its ties with anime, Avatar The Last Airbender was never released in Japan. The first season was dubbed and advertised in the country, but never officially released due to network failure. Sadly, airbending does not translate to airwave bending. Number 50. In the episode Zuko Alone, Zuko almost attacks a man cooking by a fire to steal his food, but refrains when he sees the man is taking the food to his pregnant wife. The man and his wife are both seen again when Aang and the gang come across them in the episode The Serpent's Pass. Number 51. Aang's mentor and guardian, Monk Gyatso, is named after the current Dalai Lama, whose full name is Tenzin Gyatso. You may recognize the first portion of his name from The Legend of Korra, where Aang's son is named Tenzin. Number 52. Ran and Shaw are the two ancient dragons who help Zuko regain his firebending. Ran means burn or ignite in Chinese, and Shaw means burn or blaze. When the Chinese characters for their names are combined, they spell out combustion, flaming, or kindle. Number 53. When written out in Chinese characters, Aang's name means peaceful soaring. Number 54. Michael DiMartino and Brian Konietzko have said that they feel that Katara is the deuteragonist of the series. His dudeness or uh, deuter or... Uh... Number 55. In a scrapped storyline, Azula was going to have an arranged marriage in book 3. Number 56. You do not want to have Appa sit on you. The flying bison weighs 10 tons. That's 20,000 pounds. Number 57. In early designs, Appa had spiral horns. They were removed because they were too difficult to animate by hand. Number 58. In Avatar Extras, it's revealed that Momo was originally going to be the reincarnation of Monk Gyatso. Number 59. Avatar Extras also stated that Appa has a double chin. That's not nice. They were way nicer to Momo. Number 60. Early on, Appa was going to be a polar bear dog. The concept was scrapped, but was later used in The Legend of Korra for Korra's companion, Naga. Number 61. Co-creator Brian Konietzko has said that Momo is his favorite character to draw and that many of the creature poses, mannerisms, and body language stem from memories of his childhood cat, Buddy. Number 62. During the series' early development, Momo was going to be a Cyclops robot monkey who had survived the destruction of a lost civilization more than a thousand years before. He had arrows and a staff to match Aang's and was going to be named Momo 3. Number 63. Grey Delisle, Azula's voice actress, also played Ta Min, Avatar Roku's wife. Number 64. The writing on the top left of Lu Ten's portrait roughly translates to to General Iroh, see you after we win the war. Your loyal son, Lu Ten. Number 65. Uncle Iroh is one of the most kind and soft-hearted characters in the series, but he was originally going to be strict, similar to how he was portrayed in Zuko Alone. Number 66. The show's creators initially planned on having an episode dealing with Iroh's past, but it was scrapped. Number 67. The actors from the Ember Island players didn't quite match up with who they were portraying, but maybe Zuko's theater counterpart was closer to him than you'd think. Actor Zuko was actually voiced by Zuko's voice actor Dante Bosco's older brother. Number 68. In the show's on-air pilot, Aang was voiced by Mitchell Musso, best known for playing Oliver on Hannah Montana. And as we discussed a couple weeks ago, he also played Jeremy in Phineas and Ferb. Number 69. Everyone's familiar with the infamous foaming mouth guy, but can you imagine him sans foam? He was initially just going to faint in this scene, but a creative contribution by animator Ki Hyun Ryu made the moment and the foam. Number 70. Brian Konietzko and Michael DiMartino joked that Suki had once dated Foaming Mouth Guy, a feat she wasn't proud of. Number 71. Suki wasn't going to appear again after The Warriors of Kyoshi, but she was so popular among fans and staff that she showed up in books 2 and 3, becoming an official member of Team Avatar. Number 72. Momo means peach in Japanese, fitting because Momo stole a 
Peach from Sokka shortly after joining the group. Number 73, Sokka and Katara were created at the same time. Brian Konietzko and Michael DiMartino liked the idea of a sibling rivalry having sisters of their own. I have a sister too and I love her very much, but the things I don't cherish fondly are sibling rivalry. Number 74, Sokka was going to be 13, but was aged up at the suggestion of Eric Coleman. Number 75, similarly, Katara was going to be 12 before she was aged up. Number 76, Lego released a Sokka minifigure in one of their sets. The description of the product on the company's official site stated that Sokka had received his boomerang from his father, Hakoda. Number 77, speaking of Hakoda, if Sokka's outfit in the graphic novel trilogy, The Promise, which takes place one year after Ozai's defeat, reminds you of his father, good. It was meant to in order to symbolize their bond. That's a very sweet gesture, as long as you have a father who dresses really cool. Number 78. In Zulu, Sokka's name means lover boy. Fitting when you consider the fact that Sokka was kissed more than any other character in the franchise. He's basically Brock, but the pitch works for him. Number 79. The pilot episode shows that Zuko was originally going to have a pet hawk. What sinister thing could you combine a hawk with? Probably something really cool, like a hawk giraffe. Number 80, Avatar Extras revealed that Zuko has an above average hearing and can hold his breath for an unusually long amount of time. Number 81, The Great Divide is one of the least popular episodes in the series. It turns out it was divisive amongst fans. Number 82, Appa's design was based on the cat bus from My Neighbor Totoro. Number 83, according to Avatar Extras, Sokka's special brand of sarcasm is called Sockchasm. The actual show is beating me in bad puns. Number 84, stylistic influences on Avatar The Last Airbender include the work of Studio Ghibli, Studio 4C, and Production IG, as well as Shinichiro Watanabe's Cowboy Bebop and Samurai Champloo and Gainax's Fooly Cooly. Number 85, Avatar director Giancarlo Volpe has claimed that the show's staff were all ordered to buy Fooly Cooly and watch every single episode of it. Number 86, the story of Avatar The Last Airbender was heavily influenced by book series and novels like Harry Potter and The Lord of the Rings. Aang and Sokka would be Gryffindor. Katara would be a Ravenclaw. No, Sokka's a Hufflepuff. I changed my mind. Number 87. Though the pair were never seen smooching on screen, according to Avatar Extras, Jet was Katara's first kiss. Number 88. Jet's final moments on the show may have seemed ambiguous, but it's been confirmed multiple times that he did indeed die. Nickelodeon was against showing a kid being killed or fatally wounded, especially in a violent manner, so it was never outrightly revealed in the series. Toph's declaration that Jet was lying when he said he'd be okay was meant to be confirmation for the viewers. The show poked fun at Jack's questionable fate during the Ember Island players. Number 89. Airbenders shave their heads to get a better feel for the air. In fact, Aang normally shaves his head every morning. Number 90. Avatar was written and produced at Nickelodeon Animation Studio in Burbank, California. The team actually shared a floor with the SpongeBob SquarePants crew. There was only one bathroom between them. Number 91. Many settings in the Fire Nation were inspired by actual locations in Iceland. Co-creator Brian Konietzko actually traveled to the country to get inspiration for environments. Number 92. Lo and Lee are Azula's firebending mentors, but neither one of them is a firebender. Yes, you don't have to know it to teach. Number 93. An Avatar Extras rumor alert stated that some say Combustion Man was a Fire Nation soldier who was injured in battle and then healed using experimental techniques that enabled him to firebend with his mind. Speaking of minds, mine is blown. Number 94. Avatar Roku took 12 years to master all four elements. Aang had less than 12 months. Talk about a time crunch. Number 95. In the writer's room for Avatar, bloodbending was jokingly called the stop hitting yourself technique. They didn't call it this in the show because bloodbending is actually terrifying. Number 96, Appa is capable of carrying 10 to 15 people at a time, depending on their sizes. Number 97, creators knew that Zuko would be Aang's firebending teacher from the very beginning. In the original series bible for the show, he was actually going to join the Avatar gang at the end of book two. What's the holdup, Zuko? Number 98, flying bison love honey. Though realistically, who doesn't? Honey's amazing. Number 99, Aang was identified as the Avatar after he chose four specific toys out of thousands. These four toys were the same chosen by his 
predecessors in the same process. This procedure is based on a near identical one the Tibetan Buddhist monks used to identify the Tolku Lama. Number 100. Avatar Extras suggests that Iroh learned how to breathe fire from Ren and Shaw, the two dragons that he saved. That's a fair trade. I saved your life. You teach me to breathe fire. Number 101. Suki is the oldest of the Kyoshi warriors and began training when she was only eight years old. Number 102. Speaking of eight-year-olds, Katara was eight when her mother died. The episode that revealed her fate, the Southern Raiders, is a fan favorite. Number 103. The design on the poster, the Ember Island Players performance, is an exaggerated version of the cover of Avatar's Season 1 DVD box set. Number 104, Huan Tim, the playwright who wrote The Boy in the Iceberg, was named after actual Avatar writer Tim Hedrick. Number 105, the Katang ship was Endgame, but that doesn't mean Zutara didn't go down without a fight. The show's creators and writers themselves actually toyed with the idea of having Zuko and Katara fall in love. Number 106, Master Piandao's appearance was based on Sif Kisu, the martial artist consultant behind Avatar The Last Airbender. Since he is the martial artist consultant, I know he can beat me up, so I am super, super sorry if I mispronounce your name. Please do not beat me up. Number 107, the final line in the series is spoken by Toph, who declared to her friends, well, I think you all look perfect. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, be sure to download the channel Frederator app and be entered into our first giveaway for an Avo plush. If you liked this video, be sure to leave a like below the video to let us know that you liked the video and you can go ahead and check out some of our other 107 facts videos here. And remember, Frederator loves you.